just there, you know. We're going to go with this. I'm going to do what Nat Tilsley said. You're all naked. So, a little bit about me. My life before forever. For those of you that don't know me, as you can see, my name's Faye, Faye Daly. I started my forever business in September 2011. My life before forever saw me in childcare. A job which I absolutely loved. A job in which I thought I would always do because that's where my passion lied, was with children. But in 2010, my little boy came along. And I'm sure many parents in the audience can relate to me when I say he blew my world apart. The love that I felt for him was just so overwhelming. I didn't know how I was going to leave him to go and look after other people's children. I couldn't get my head around it. But due to finances, that's exactly what happened. And what happens to a lot of mums, they want to be at home, but they can't. So I went back nine months later. Only two months after that, I was told I was being made redundant. So there was joy mixed with a bit of frightened, I suppose. I was happy that I was at home with Oliver, having the time that I wanted but then really quite scared about our finances and what it was we were going to do. But I knew that I needed to find that best of both worlds that I craved. That's what I wanted. Time with my boy, but money to know that we were okay. So I was introduced to Forever as a referral from a very good friend of mine to my amazing sponsor, Debbie Nwangwa. And that's where my journey really began. So early on in my forever journey, I learned that there was a number of things that I needed to do, but that I needed to do really, really well. And one of those fundamental things was planning. Planning a brand new team member and ensuring that it was effective. Now, we've had some absolutely amazing training sessions in the past, all about that first planning meeting and using your first steps to manager all of which can be find, found on the Forever Living Products UK YouTube channel if you want to take a look. In particular, the training that Jane did at the June Success Express Day. Um, I recommend all my team go and watch that. But today, what I wanted to look at was what do you do beyond that first planning meeting? The first one, I think everybody would agree, you all do a first planning meeting with your team. But then, what actually happens? So I thought I would talk you through what it is that I do with my team members and how I've been able to get retention in my team and keep those team members going. So for me, I plan each team member to have four planning meetings in their first month. Planning meetings, information sharing sessions, whatever you want to call it. But in their first 30 days, it's all about guidance. It's all about holding their hand and ensuring they know exactly what they are doing. But what should you cover? So we don't often hear about anything past the first planning meeting. So let's have a look at some ideas that you could focus your planning meetings on. So very quickly, and I'm not going to um, go over this very much, but let's just look at what you will have covered in that first planning meeting. It should have happened 48 hours after signing their first, sorry, signing their application form. So you would have looked at goal setting with them, getting emotionally attached to their business and their reason for doing it, their why. You would have looked at their need goals and their want goals, or short-term and long-term goals. <clears throat> you would have connected their goal to the marketing plan and showing them exactly which direction they needed to head into. You would have looked at their who do you know list that they began and started looking at memory joggers so that they could expand that who do you know list. You would have covered what is a case credit and ensuring that they understand exactly what this terminology means. You will have explained the marketing plan in detail, showing them exactly where their goals fit into it. You will have booked their first and second launches with them, 
covered different methods of retailing, found on page 10. We would have gone through the business cycle, each quadrant. We would have looked at profiling people from their Who Do You Know list. And finally, how to place an order online or via um, the telephone. A lot of people then set tasks to complete at home, such as registering on their team websites, Forever Living and Forever Knowledge. Make sure that they begin using those products. That first planning meeting will probably happen before they've got their hands on their products. So it's making sure that part of their task at home is to use the products and begin recommending them. Send them away to continue to build that who do you know list using the memory joggers that you've taught them. Begin thinking about perhaps a business name. I also plug my team into any recorded trainings that I might have. Get them working on their goal board, get those goals into um, picture format. How to create a seven day plan, make sure that they produce that so they know exactly what they're doing that week. I ask them to profile five to ten people from their Who Do You Know list and to order either a pup box or a clean nine, just so they can start expanding those products and look at other ways of retailing. So what happens after this first planning meeting? They've gone away to do their homework. What do you do then? For me, I arrange a second planning meeting, seven days after that first planning. For me, they need to have completed those tasks at home because I can't move them forward unless they have. If they say to me, I haven't done it, I didn't quite do what you asked me to do, I explain the importance of these tasks and how I can't actually show them anything else to further their business until they do do it. So I make them responsible for their own business and I don't then meet them until they have done it. I start my second meeting by asking them, how are you? You've got to remember this business, this, this planning meeting is only seven days in. We had seven days. Remember how you felt in your first seven days? That overwhelming feeling. Some of us were a bit scared. Some of us even faced negativity that early on in our business. I think it's really important to check in with them. It could be that you need to celebrate with them. They could have had their first sale. And I think it's really important to celebrate that with them. And then also review the tasks that we set to do at home. Launches. So we start looking here. Have they got their launch due that following week? If it is near, then I start to discuss the practicalities of this launch. What will they need? How do they set up for the evening? How will the evening go? What are your expectations of the evening ahead? And how many people have you got attending? Maybe it's already taken place. If so, this is where we review it. We look at the sales that were made and how to place the order for those sales. We look at if there was any people interested in the business. And then we look at following up. You may have done questionnaires. How do you follow up a questionnaire? And then I confirm with them the next details, uh, sorry, the details of their next event. That might be a home BP or it might be a second launch party for them. We then look at volume mapping. This is a little bit of jargon too. I never really understood what volume mapping was for a long time. So I want my team to understand what it is. So I explain that it is the breaking down of activity into case credits. How we can then see the volume that's expected to come from them themselves and from their team. And how if they've got a goal imminent, that they may need to raise that activity level to bring the volume in needed. It's at this point that I then share with them a goal to manager. Now this might be a five month goal, six month, seven month, it all depends on what they want. I'll show them the volume that's required for the activity needed to produce that volume for manager.
We then look at the online websites. At this point, they may or may not have had their email from forever. If they have, I use their login details to log on to their websites. If not, I log into my own. I explain what each of them are, because it can be quite confusing, all these websites. What are they for? Let them know that Forever Knowledge is exactly that. It's where we get all of our knowledge from about the business. And that Forever Living is where we look at our own business and where we do all of our ordering from. I give them a brief tutorial on how to use each one and then I signpost them on where to subscribe and how to personalise their own website. Then we move on to contacting people. So we sit down with the profiles that I ask them to do for homework. So you can see how if they hadn't done those profiles I asked them to do, how can we move on to this section? We need to discuss each profile and begin pulling together an approach for each individual. We then look at practicing the call. What do you say? How do you structure it? So by using their top five people, we begin making those calls. We ex I explain to them that we contact three to five people if we're part-time and five to ten people if we're full-time. I also cover other styles of contacting, such as email, Facebook Messenger, text messages, and of course, face-to-face -face contact. And we practice them together, so that when they leave that second meeting, they've already got in their mind different approaches. Following on from contacting, they're more than likely going to book some one-to-ones in. So I cover this in brief. I show them how to download uh, the one-to-one -one presenter onto a media device. I also show them how they can order a hard copy too. And then if they're talking to people that are further afield, I show them how they can do the one-to-one -one online. I explain to them that I will do their first few one-to-ones and that they will be the student and learn exactly how to present the business. But I also suggest that they go away and ask their friends to be guinea pigs for them and they can practice this and get feedback from people they know and trust. Following on from our one-to-one, -one, then we're gonna to go to a business presentation. So I feel that this needs covering too. The importance of why they should go to a business presentation. Treat it as your night in the office. It's either a place for you to learn from, for you to support other people, or for you to take a guest along too. I go through how to invite somebody along to a VP. And then I also go through words to use at the end of the VP. I know that at my first business presentation, when I took a guest, the presentation ended and I said, right then, let's go. I didn't actually close it because I didn't really know how. So I wanna make sure that they know that they should turn to the person they brought and say, so what part excited you the most? What was your favourite part? And can you see how, by embarking on this opportunity, you can dot, dot, dot. So it's making sure they know exactly how to do that. Because if I'm not there, I can't make it to support them. They need to know these things. Activity trackers. For me, this is an important part of your business, using your activity tracker. But why? Why is it important? I think you need to keep track. You are talking to a lot of people and the only way you can see where you're at with your business and who you're talking to is by writing it down. So this is a really good tool to do that. It's all in one place and you can see where they are in the business cycle. I show them my activity tracker so then they can see exactly how it works. And I also show them that they can use this to monitor their business and plan future months. Because from here, you can get your stats. So how many people did you need to contact to get a one-to-one? -one? How many one-to-ones did you need to do to get a guest to the business presentation? How many guests to the business presentation actually joined your business? And you can only get that from your activity tracker or something similar.
We then look at business cards. I show them mine, and then I discuss with them ideas on what they could do. What words could they use? Then I signpost them to where they could order it from and leave it as a task for them to do at home. Social media is a big part of our business now, so it's something I've combined into our planning meeting. We go through the do's and don'ts of social media. No making medical claims, no discounting online, no putting before and after pictures on there. So they know this before they even begin. I explain what the 80-20 rule is. 80% lifestyle posts, 20% direct forever. I also remind them that you're going to be re representing forever as a name. Make sure that your posts are positive, that they're healthy, and that perhaps you need to look at your nights out, that there's not lots of drunken photos. We can all have fun, but make sure there's no swearing on there. Then it comes to the legal bit, which isn't a nice area, but it's an area we have to cover now. So, you need to signpost them to where they can watch the compliance videos from. You need to stress the importance of adhering to the compliance because this affects us all. I advise them on registering their business with HMRC, explain that they've got three months to do this, and I also recommend DSL to them. I also give them advice on public liability because if they're going to go out and book events, they need to know that they need to have this as well. As you can see, I also then give them tasks to do at home. I won't go through them because you can see them yourself, but again, this is something they have to do before we move on to the next planning meeting. So planning session three or information session three, it needs to be done within the next seven days of the previous one. And again, we can't move forward unless their homework tasks have been done. In this session, I look at different ways of um, contacting people um, or building your who do you know list, gathering contacts, or as Anne said earlier, making friends. So I look at the different types of contact marketing the direct approach, or maybe it's people that actually provide a service to us. I talk to them about complimenting people and smiling. We talk about what to wear, what is their target audience? Are they going out there to speak to mums dressed in a power suit? Because it probably won't attract those mums. Or the other way around. What to take? Business cards, a nice pen, not something that's been chewed and a pad to take that information down. And then we go through types of things that they could say whilst contact marketing. We then look at customer care and follow up. Why, why do we do this? I always give them an example of myself. My first launch party had 10 people come. Every single one of them purchased from me. My order arrived, I gave it out, and then wondered why they didn't come back and order from me. Because I never followed them up. I never even asked them how they were getting on with it. Nothing. So I lost those 10 customers straight away. So you can ask my team, I'm quite hot on this now. It's something that I coach all of them that you need to do. Forever isn't about getting new customers every month. It's about having regular customers. The only way you're gonna have regular customers is by looking after them showing them that you genuinely care about that product that you've given to them. So when should they do it? The first few days of them receiving it, then maybe a week or two later to see how they're getting on, and then maybe mark in your diary when they might be getting low on the product. And then we discuss how they can do this follow-up and customer care. So the final session that I do with them before the end of their first month is in with the next seven days. And this is where we look at their review. They're almost a month into their business now. Are they four case credit active yet? If not, why not? What do we need to work on and how do we need to ensure that they are? 
they might be going for a promotion already. So let's have a look at where they are with that. Maybe it's a base month for promotion. So we break down looking at everything that they wanted to achieve and whether um, they've achieved it. I then look at their strengths and weaknesses with them. So I identify with them which areas they feel confident in and areas which they don't. Praise them for their strengths and work with them on their weaknesses. And finally, I revisit the business cycle. The reason I do this is because I want to ensure that they understand what it is. They understand each quadrant and why it flows and why you have to do every single part of it. I ensure that I link it to their goals as well, that by doing this it's going to generate the volume needed to achieve their goals. I feel that this keeps their momentum high and it keeps the excitement bubbling because they can see exactly why they're doing what they're doing. It enables them as well to explain it to friends and family. So for me, it's knowledge plus their excitement equals that attraction from their friends and family. So why do this? Why work in this way in your business? For me, I have this on um, sort of a tick chart and I print it off for each new team member and I ensure that each new team member gets every section of what we've just covered. For me, it's enabled me to have that retention within my business. I don't have a lot of people join and then leave by the end of the first month. They stay within the business. It gives duplication of structure. If I'm coaching this to my team, they're gonna go away and coach it to their team, who will coach it to their team, who will coach it to their team. It results in a strong and stable team and that everybody pull, pulling in that right direction towards everybody's goals. So three and a half years on, what's my life like now? I have four frontline amazing managers, Nikki and Ian, they were my next door neighbours. Katie, she was a friend, still is an amazing friend I should say, hadn't met her many times but we hit it off straight away. Sarah, we were old school friends that linked back up long after we left school. And my sister, who's also in the business. Chairman's bonus check, three years running. VIP member, three years running. Global Rally, three years running. This has took me to Hawaii, to London, and we're going to Singapore. Eagle Manager and Senior Eagle Manager, three years running. This has took us to Sardinia, California, and later this year, Mexico. Car Plan Level 3, which to begin with paid off my debts and then it got me the new car. It got me the experience I never thought I would get to have, going into a showroom, picking exactly what I wanted, in what color I wanted it in. I'm number 10 in the number one team in the UK, the power team. <laughs> I'm a proud member of Natalie Healy's leadership team. And earning well over, sorry, I've got over 6,000 team members, well over 6,000 team members, that each and every one of them are amazing and exactly why I stand here today. I'm earning over a six-figure income that every month blows me away when I open that week up because it grows every month. We're now a family of four, which, is, which means that I actually took over nine months out of my business last year to have my second child. I could only do that by having a stable business, having team members that know exactly what they are doing. We live in an amazing house. We live in a much sought after area. Oliver goes to a fantastic school and we create amazing memories together in places all over the world. I have work-life balance. My mum's been able to give up work and come and work for me. My mum is the nanny as well as being nanny. My children have dream birthday parties. The reason I do this is because I want them to feel 
just how I did the day that they were born. And least but not least, I've made some amazing friends in forever. So I'm just going to finish with my message. Don't just give an amazing first planning meeting. Hold their hand for the first 30 days of their business. Be that puppet master. Guide them. And then watch them fly. Thank you all for listening.